so good evening friends uh, today we are going to speak on rotational profile of lower limbs uh, so basically uh, we are going to talk about in towing and out towing gait which is a common problem which a pediatric orthopedician or even a general orthopedician may be seeing in children so uh, let's clear out some terminology uh, before we start off uh, we often hear the terms version and torsion and we kind of get confused now these terms can be used interchangeably however the proper terminology for a normal value is a version so any value which is within two standard deviations of normal becomes a version whereas anything which becomes a deformity that is more than two standard deviations away from the normal becomes a deformity and that is often called as torsion now coming to the normal development now as we know uh, both femoral antiversion uh, is quite high during birth so at birth the values for normal uh, antiversion is about 30 degrees and this reduces to about 10 degrees by the time maturity is set in so that's by about 10 to 12 years and even internal tibial torsion increases sorry uh, internal tibial torsion decreases that means the foot rotates laterally in comparison to the knee joint so that also increases to about 15 degrees by maturity so if i am supposed to show it so this particular angle the first one is the femoral antiversion so this increases from 30 degrees to say about 10 degrees so make it 12 degrees whereas the tibial rotation the tibia rotates laterally or externally okay external rotation and that increases from 5 degrees to 15 degrees so that is from birth to maturity so uh, if you are having a child who is having a in towing gait due to increased femoral antiversion and then you follow up this child it slowly reduces okay similarly if you are seeing a child with internal tibial torsion coming to you with in towing gait that also slowly reduces because the normal developmental uh, the normal development of the lower limbs is such that all deformities which are growing outwards or all deformities which are pointing inwards will get corrected because the normal development of the foot and the lower limb is to rotate outwards however if a child is presenting to you with a out towing gait or with a lateral rotation of the toes then these children will have an exaggeration of their deformity as they grow because the normal development will increase the lateral rotation of the tibia and will increase the femoral antiversion as well okay i hope this is clear to you with this in mind we will go on to the evaluation which is the crux of this particular topic so whenever you evaluate a child always always start with the history because it gives you an idea about what you are dealing with this includes about when the deformity was first noticed by their parents and how fast it has been progressing it also includes the family history the history of the siblings history of the parents and the grandparents whether they were walking with such deformities in their lives as well or not and this also gives us an idea about if we are dealing with a dysplasia or not apart from this certain conditions such as the activity levels as well as the birth history will give us ideas to other conditions such as cerebral palsy and slipped capital femoral epiphysis now once that is done we do a screening examination and screening examination is to rule out all major deformities like a uh, dysplastic hips a ddh neurological disorders such as cerebral palsy or pseudo traumatic or traumatic conditions such as uh, scfe or a femoral neck fracture and once we are done with the history and a screening examination we move on to the rotational profile now the rotational profile was given by staheli so uh, it's commonly called the staheli's rotational profile okay and we need this because we need to differentiate about the different types of gates and what particular condition we are looking at so if we have the rotational profile in our heads 
we can easily rule out or find out which of these following conditions are due to are causing the particular intoing or outtoing first we look at the intoing here in intoing first we do the screening because for screening in intoing we need to rule out conditions such as a spastic cerebral palsy a dysplastic hip and once that is done we do a rotational profile because we finished the history and we have finished the initial screening in the rotational profile we have four conditions the first and foremost condition is in the hip that is the increased femoral antiversion the second condition is a internal tibial torsion the third condition is a metatarsus adductus and the fourth condition is an adducted grade toe which is a hallux varus deformity so these are all the different types of in toeing that can be seen if in case there is a asymmetric hip rotation then it is mandatory to get a radiograph of the pelvis because most of these conditions are bilateral and if they are unilateral they are more common on the left side compared to the right side okay i hope all of this is clear now we move on to outtoing now in outtoing once you have done the history and the screening examination we need to know a few conditions for which we need to screen out so for outtoing any condition which causes a external rotation deformity at the hip causes a outtoing gait it could be a neuromuscular disorder it could be a slipped capital femoral epiphysis it could be flat feet it could also be a sequelae of perthes disease so uh, all of these are the screening conditions we just need to rule out and once that is done because and once that is done we come to the rotational profile and in the rotational profile again we have three conditions the first condition is the infantile external hip rotational contraction so that means the hip unilaterally is externally rotated and there is a contracture present in the hip joint the second condition is a external femoral torsion or a decreased femoral antiversion or a femoral retroversion and the third condition is an external tibial torsion if you draw a line in between all of these conditions get better with age whereas all the outtoing conditions worsen with age i hope this is clear now the rotational profile provides the information necessary to establish the level and the severity of any torsional problem now the level means are we looking at the hip joint the knee joint or the ankle and foot and the severity gives us the quantity as to how much of deformity is present so both the quality where the deformity exists and the quantity of a torsional problem is found out with the rotational profile it is mandatory that you record the values in degrees for both the right and the left side now the rotational profile is done in four steps the first step is to observe the child walking and running so this is the foot progression angle it is important because you should see the child both walking and running because running can make the deformity more obvious and often these children only complain when they start running because their feet touch each other or the foot hits the opposite knee or the leg causing them to fall the second step is to assess the femoral version that is to find out the femoral antiversion the third one is to quantitate the tibial version that is the amount of tibial torsion or the tibial version that is seen and lastly we look at the foot whether or not any deformity is present in the foot Thank <laughs> you.